Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we move on with our conversations right here on the program. Um, of course, the ASU strike is one that has given a lot of Nigerians reason for concern. We have a guest standing by to discuss this um, very all important issue that has affected Nigeria's education sector, and it's of course given a lot of parents uh, reason to complain. In fact, the uh, Parents Association has released a statement uh, calling for more to be done by um, the authorities as far as the strike is concerned. Uh, ASU has extended the strike by two months or so eight weeks. They had a meeting at their National Secretariat in the University of Abuja um, yesterday where this particular decision was taken. Before we introduce our guest, who is uh, uh, Dela Shiru, chairman of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, uh, in the University of Lagos, let's quickly go to the background of this story. Well, after declaring a one-month warning strike on February 14 in protest at the federal government's failure to meet their demands, the Academic Staff Union of Universities has voted to extend the strike for a further eight weeks, arising from an emergency meeting of its National Executive Council at the University of Abuja on Sunday, March 13, 2022, uh, at its National Secretariat. Uh, ASU President Professor Emmanuel Osodeke uh, said the union had concluded that the government had failed to satisfactorily address all the issues raised in the 2020 FGN ASU Memorandum of Action within the four-week rollover strike period and therefore resolved that the strike be rolled over for another eight weeks to give the government more time to address all the issues in concrete terms so that in his words students will resume, resume as soon as possible. Now, other demands of the union, as listed by ASU, include earned academic allowances, the state universities, promotion arrears, withheld salaries, and non-remittance of third-party deductions. Now, since the beginning of the strike on February 14, 2022, the government and ASU have met two times. Now, joining us to discuss the development and its implications, let's welcome Delia Shu, who is the chairman of the Academic Staff Union of Universities in the University of Lagos. Ms. Shu, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you very much for this invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Please give us a, a summary of what happened um, in the University of Abuja um, yesterday, I'm sure, uh, on Sunday, right? I'm sure you were there at that meeting. Oh, yes, I was at the meeting. What happened is as uh, described by the president of our union. We met uh, at the uh, National Secretariat of our union, situated in the University of Abuja, where we took reports from our trustees and principal officers about the engagements that they have had with government so far. In the briefing, we were told that uh, uh, go government has not demonstrated enough will and the desire to meet the minimum demands of our union. Uh, although we have a couple of them like you have listed out, but some are very, very critical uh, to this ongoing strike action. One of them is the question of uh, scooping up the already renegotiated agreement between our union and government with a view to implementing it. Uh, after the briefing from our uh, trustees and principal officers, NEC discussed the items one by one and concluded that uh, giving the ongoing narratives and going, given the work that is still ongoing, it is necessary for our union to give government some more time to be able to put their hearts together uh, in the interest of Nigerian students and the Nigerian university system. Consequent upon that, the National Executive Council decided that uh, there was the need to extend the strike action by another two we, uh, another eight weeks, which is two months, and that has been so communicated to Nigerians. 
Okay, um, let's also look at another issue that some persons are saying that this might just be a bone of contention, the major bone of contention between the union that Tasu and the federal government, and he talks about the payment system. Uh, you know, the federal government is proposing the IPPIS system. And of course, the union is talking about the UTAS uh, payment system. And some people are saying that uh, the reason ASU is really embarking the bone of contention, despite all that's been put out, is necessarily the payment system, uh, which, you know, the federal government doubts the transparency of the system in the administration of, you know, the universities. Can you share your thoughts on this? Uh, well, let me start by saying that uh, uh, government is not proposing IPPIS. Government forcefully enrolled us on IPPIS, despite uh, our disagreement with government on the suitability of IPPIS for the Nigerian university system. And our union has been vindicated because in a recent report by the Auditor General of the Federation, uh, IPPIS was described as a fraud. And our union had challenged federal government to publish the report of, that, of, of the Auditor General of the Federation so that we can see in bold relief the damage that IPPIS had done uh, to the Nigerian university system and to the Nigerian state as a whole. Let me also, also mention that right, PIS uh, is an, a payment system uh, supposedly to cop corruption and waste in the salary and enrollment of government workers. Uh, this has eroded uh, autonomy and the smooth operation of the university system since its operation. It was as a result of the rejection of IPPIS that government threw the challenge at us that if we say IPPIS is not good, can we provide an alternative payment platform for the Nigerian university system? Our union took up that challenge, constituted a technical team that has produced what is now called the University Transparency and Accountability Solution, UTAS, which is a payment platform and software for payment of salaries in the Nigerian university system. That system had undergone series of tests by NITSA. And in fact, the user acceptability test that was conducted by NITSA, Utah scored 88%. And then we challenged government that was IPPIS subjected to any test. IPPIS was not only subjected to any test, up to now, it has not been tested. In fact, the database for IPPIS is not domiciled in Nigeria. It's domiciled somewhere in the United States of America. So, having gone through all of these processes, while discussion was still going on, and Utah was still being tested, the Director General of NITA went on air, misinforming Nigerians and telling lies about Utah. The current situation, if I may inform, is that our technical team and that of NIDA are currently meeting in their office in Abuja, clarifying gray areas and explaining areas that they don't understand as a prelude to certifying UTAS as a payment platform for the Nigerian university system. But um, you also have the federal government saying that the UTAS failed integrity tests, and that's what the federal government is saying, uh, that they don't trust uh, you. We, we, have, we have said that is not true. That, that's a lie. And that's misleading Nigerians. UTAS cannot fail integrity tests because UTAS is a system that has been carefully developed by the best brains in the Nigerian university system. And I am informing you that those areas that the NITSDA officials did not understand, which made them give that verdict, is currently being reviewed between our technical team and the NITSDA officials. It is unfortunate that government officials like the Director General of NITSDA who had never attended any of the meetings, whether technical 
or otherwise could go publicly on air to mislead Nigerians and mislead the people about an unfounded tale concerning Utahs. Okay. So as I, as I speak to you, Utahs has integrity. It has not failed. It is a system that is homegrown, that is sufficiently fortified to take care of the payment system and its peculiarities in the Nigerian university system. I'd like to take you back a bit, you know, let's go back to the IPPS system. And you have mentioned that it's, it's uh, you know, the, that payment system that was imposed on, you know, the universities, a, a fraudulent system. Can you take us through how fraudulent it is? Because it feels like this might just be the bone of contention between your union and the government. Yeah, thank you very much. The first is that, as I speak with you, nobody in the Nigerian university system today under IPPIS can tell you exactly how much he or she is going to earn in any particular month. Uh, quite often, you find a situation where the salaries of a particular professor is amputated and paid, I mean, to another professor. There are wrong entries there are most often salaries uh belonging to a professor in unilag can be paid to another one in buk or elsewhere not only that the uh human resource compartment and the payroll system are together being lumped together by the ippis office in such a manner that provides ample opportunity for those in charge of the system to enroll even people who don't work in a particular system on the IPPIS platform and they continue to receive salary. In some uh, months, let me be specific, in the month of, uh, of, of November, October or November last year, uh, a number of people were paid about three months' salaries and then they have to start withdrawing it instead of one. So the payment platform had constituted, you know, a clog in the wheel of progress of the Nigerian university system. And you find a situation where when things like that happen, you cannot even resolve, I mean, those little challenges in your respective universities. You have to travel all the way down to Abuja to get those things resolved, which also provides an ample opportunity for those who work there to fleece our members of their added money by way of kickbacks and I mean, settlement for them to get, you know, their, their challenges sorted out at the IPPIS office. All right. Uh, Mr. Dela Shiru, um, the Ministry of uh, um, uh, Education or the federal government basically uh, had said last week that um, they won't negotiate with the, uh, they won't make gunpoint negotiations with the um, Midasu is essentially saying that um, they wouldn't like to be negotiating under duress. And the argument about making gunpoint negotiating negotiations or um, uh, negotiations under duress is that ASU, you know, whilst the negotiations are ongoing between the union and the federal government, has embarked on a strike whilst they're still negotiating. What are your, what, what's your take on that? The question is why will the Ministry of Education wait until we embark on strike to commence the negotiation. When the negotiation started last year under Professor Muzali Jubril, we weren't on strike. The, the renegotiation was concluded in May 2021. Between May 2021 and last month when we started the strike, what was the Ministry of Education doing? It is the Ministry of Education that is making ASU to negotiate under very conducive conditions and circumstances. If they have been proactive and they have lived up to their billing as those who superintend over education in Nigeria, I do not think that this strike will commence in the first instance, let alone be talking about negotiating under duress. So the point to note is that the renegotiation had already been concluded what is left is for government to tell us its own side of the story, put a counter proposal before our union for the consideration of our members. It is not true that government is negotiating under duress 
it is cheap blackmail and it smarts of a group of people who are bereft of ideas about how to move the education sector forward in Nigeria. All right. Uh, a response of the federal government to, to this new announcement that also has extended the rollover by eight weeks is um, the Minister of State for Education, um, Mr. Chukwebeka Nwajuba, who I'm sure you know very well, um, who is saying that um, uh, he's insisting that the federal government has met all your demands and that all the end allowances as well as the revitalization funds have been released. Mr. You Ashim, see, yes. the, the best thing is to disregard uh, Mr. Wajoba because it's more of a confusion in that ministry than any responsible public officer interested in resolving crisis. In all of what I have been explaining, did I talk about end allowances or revitalization fund? We are saying that we have a renegotiated document with government. Scoop it up, let us discuss the content of the renegotiated agreement as a basis, I mean, for increasing welfare conditions of our members and ensuring that the university system works seamlessly. A, min, a junior minister is sitting down somewhere and, and misinforming and misleading Nigerians. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's high time Nigerians told Wajoba that his, his, his likes are not the kind of people who should superintend over education in Nigeria. He has, he has been more of a, of a problem to the entire process than a solution. And that is exactly what is currently displayed. How can a union that is aggrieved that government abdicated its own responsibility and all the minister can, would have to say is that end allowances and revitalization fund are, are, has been released. It's also a loud testimony to the fact that he is really not familiar with issues in contention under this, this current uh, strike action. Oh, and it yeah. would be nice for Mr. Wajoba to sit down and get familiar with the issues rather than, I mean, going to press and making infuriatory statements that will further degenerate the situation rather than ameliorate it. All right, all right. very strong words for you, for Mr. Wajoba. But... What are the contents of this, this renegotiated agreement? So those who are listening and are wondering, and I've read the statement by the Minister of State for Education saying they've released the funds to you, and it talked about the re revitalization fund and end allowances, meeting all your demands. What are the contents of this renegotiated agreement? Let's just go back there. The, the, there are four pillars in the renegotiated agreement. The first is the condition of service of our members. Mr. Iwajoba is, is saying what he's saying because he's feeding fat on public funds. University teachers in Nigeria have been receiving the same salary in the last 13 years. That is not a subject of concern to the Minister of State for Education. The highest paid professor in, in Nigeria University is today receiving a paltry sum of 400 something thousand naira. That is not a subject of concern for the Minister of State. For you to hire the, uh, an assistant lecturer in, the, in, in any federal university in Nigeria, his take-home pay is not up to 150000 naira. We are saying that government should renegotiate this condition of service so that we can make, I mean, teaching in the university attractive to best place is busy talking about end allowances. End allowances are mere symptoms of a failed system. The meaning of end allowances is that government is unable to provide the requisite number of workers in the university, and those who are doing excess workload should be compensated for the work that they are doing. How does that measure up to conditions of service? So the first pillar of the renegotiated agreement is conditions of service. The second is funding for revitalization of public universities. Universities have remained in terms of reagents, in terms of uh, library provision, etc. So one of the terms of that agreement is that funding should be provided so that we can bring to life this decaying infrastructure. And that is where the question of revitalization comes in. Uh, government is in default of 1.1 trillion naira as revitalization fund. The highest that has been released so far 
was by the President Goodluck Jonathan administration, which is 220 million. This government has also re has only released a paltry sum of 70 billion naira, and the Minister of State is saying that all the money has been released. The third in the renegotiated agreement is what we call university autonomy and academic freedom. It is that university autonomy that IPPIS is vast is other matters that are related to all of the three items that I have uh, enumerated above, and they have to do with global best practices in making the universities globally competitive in terms of research and innovation and ensuring that our graduates are globally competitive. Okay, um, but let's also um, stay with these issues. I mean, we're still understanding some of the concern. Nigerians, a lot of persons have been taken aback with the fact that uh, ASU is still talking about implementation of the agreement that was entered in 2009. And just some days back, uh, the, your national president, Emmanuel Shuduke, who granted an interview to a sister station, had mentioned insisting that the government should uh, chose between um, funding these universities or shutting them and saying that the government must implement the agreement of 2009. Thus, all of this fall on there. First of all, I'd like to ask, has the government not implemented the agreement entered with uh, the union, of course, which you're part of in 2009? Uh, yeah, I think that what the president said is that government should implement the renegotiated agreement in in the 2009 agreement, both government and our union agreed that that agreement should be reviewed every three years. Our government had remained in default because since 2009 till date, government has refused to renegotiate that agreement. But our union, having gone on strike for nine months in 2020, forced government to renegotiate the 2009 agreement. That agreement had been renegotiated and concluded since May 2021. So what the president is saying is that government should scoop up the renegotiated agreement and commence implementation. Now, in terms of making our universities competitive, what, what is contained in the agreement is for government to implement best practices, globally accepted best practices in our university system to save it from imminent collapse. And our government, our president is just putting government on the edge. Fund your universities like a responsible government will do or close them for that period of time when, I mean, you'll be able to make up your mind as to the adequacy of funds to be released to the universities. And of course, I know that it is not in the interest of Nigerians and the development of Nigeria as a country for government to close down the university. So our president is just putting government on the edge. Okay. So, but... Um... Having an extension of the strike by eight weeks, where does this leave the Nigerian student? I will want to, um, you know, say that you are also a parent. So, and you have other parents who are uh, worried about the fact that their kids would be out of school or children would be out of school uh, for a very long time. Looking at the implication, uh, devices and all the issues this would cost them uh, financially, you know, and otherwise. Well, you see, that's, that's a very challenging concern. But my reaction is, you see, there is no gain when there is no pain. For us to keep the Nigerian university system, all of us must endure this pain for a while. If we don't continue to do what we are doing now, we may find out that we don't even have a university for these children to return. As I speak with you, there are no public primary schools that are what that name in Nigeria anymore. There are no public secondary schools that are enviable for even all of us to send our kids there. 
if we don't continue to struggle in the manner that we are doing at the moment, we may wake up and find out that government are destroyed, you know, public universities and handed them over to their private cronies and collaborators. So these struggles are necessary to keep the Nigerian university system functional, to ensure it plays its strategic role in the development of Nigeria. And my appeal to parents is rather than sit down and agonize, we should all organize and challenge this vicious and wicked government that we have at the moment and hold them accountable you know, to their electoral promises in ensuring that they fund education adequately. As you may already be aware, no any nation can rise above its own level of educational development. Okay, uh, and Mr. that's Shiro. why government must take education very seriously. Yeah, Mr. Shiro, finally, before you go, of course, the Minister of Labor and Employment has said that um, uh, ASU has been acting in disregard of the Labor Act and the dispute, uh, the Trade and Dispute Act as well. Um, I would like to know if you're being paid your salary while you are um, still striking. That's number one. Number two, if the federal government doesn't um, accede to your fresh demands, uh, what will you do uh, on the expiration of these two months? So two questions, if you can answer that very quickly. It is not correct that we're acting against labor laws. And uh, the Minister of Labor himself has not drawn our attention to any specific labor law that has been violated. In terms of paying our salaries, you know, we commenced our strike in February. We had already worked for the salaries that we have already paid. It is incumbent on, you know, government to pay us because they are the ones who are foisting this strike action on Nigerians. If government had lived up to its, uh, its promises and its uh, uh, agreements with our union, this strike would certainly be unnecessary. And the third question is to say that we all need to understand the role which education plays uh, in any society. Indeed, societies that are making progress the world over are those who are investing heavily, you know, in their education system. And it is our hope and, and wish that the Nigerian government would also understand this historic responsibility of, of education in any society and change its attitude uh, to education, especially tertiary education in Nigeria. Thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. Dila Ashiru is the chairman of the Academic Staff Union of Universities in the University of Lagos. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share my thoughts with you. We are indeed grateful for your concern in the development of education in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, a lot to talk about um, as far as education is concerned. But we'll keep our eyes on this one, of course. You can be sure of the latest right here on this station. We have a break ahead where we return. Merci. Will be time for us to delve into the power sector. Stay with us.